and welcome to the Haverhill Journal, where we take a look at what's happening now in our city. I'm Lindsay Paris, and we have a hauntingly good Halloween show for you today, where we'll meet some of the scariest horrorists of New England at the Merrimack Valley Halloween Book Festival, and hear about a whole bunch of upcoming community events later on. But first, in spite of the holiday decor, there's nothing spooky about the group of hardworking and dedicated local women inducted this week into the Haverhill YWCA's Academy of Women at the YWCA Tribute to Women event. They were nominated by their peers, friends, and family to receive this special honor. Since its inception in 1989, over 300 honorees have been inducted into the Academy, and some of these inspiring ladies told us their stories. Hi, my name is Renee McGuire. I'm the site director here at the YWC of Haverhill. Here at the YWCA, um, we provide services to women who are involved in domestic violence or sexual assault situations. Our Haverhill YWCA tribute started 27 years ago where we um, honor women who are in our community or the surrounding communities who have accomplished amazing things in their community or have gone above and beyond or have overcome obstacles that have just made them to where they are, taken them to where they are today. The woman who gets nominated ends up going into our Academy of Women. It started way back 27 years ago and like I said we're up to about 285 right now and then we're going to add on the 22 this year. So it's, it's a great group of women to be, you know, to be a part of. My name is Sarah McCarthy and I am the production coordinator at HC Media. Um, I also sit on a lot of uh, committee boards such as the Christmas Stroll Committee, uh, the Kids Fest Committee, and I volunteer a lot on other committees in town uh, such as the Haverhill O Positive Festival that will be happening in May of 2017. When I found out that I was nominated to be a part of the Tribute to Women, I was so surprised. Like, what? Me? No way. <laughs> so I am so honored to be a part of this amazing group of women. And all these women, they're just uh, my awesome role models. Hello, my name is Carolyn Hobbs. I've been a resident of Haverhill for 38 years. I am 78 years old, and I am the mother of 11 living children. I gave birth to 13, two are in heaven. I have 27 grandchildren and two great-grandchildren. I love Haverhill, the people of Haverhill, the surrounding community, and even the world in any way that I can be of help. We go to homes and wherever we're invited, whether it's in the park, whether it's in our backyard, in our community, we reach out to the youth, we reach out to um, red mothers, we reach out to couples, we reach out to married uh, people. The word is out from Maine to Florida. If you're in the area and you're in need, get in touch with the Hobbses. Get in touch with Rehoboth Lighthouse, Full Gospel Church, whatever your need is, they will help you. My name is Mary Ellen McAvoy Lawler. I have been a resident of the Merrimack Valley uh, most of my life. I have been a proud resident of Haverhill for 16 years, and I now represent a company called Surpro. I am on the board of directors of the Clean River Project, which I'm extremely proud. I've been with them since their inception 10 years ago. I am on the board of directors for the Community Action, Inc., and I work on a lot of committees, Kids Fest, the Christmas Stroll, so I'm pretty involved in them. My company, Surpro, is completely dedicated to us working in the community and they're kind enough to let me do a lot of this because I'm a firm believer. If you really believe in your town, your city, your neighborhood, you need to get out there. You need to just get up, get out there. I talk to these women, I read their biographies. It is amazing what they do. And I still get the phone call every time saying, hey, what did I do? I don't know why I deserve this. And it's just, you know, and I say, hey, did, did you see your bio? Like you were doing amazing things in the community. There are so many other women here in Haverhill that do uh, just countless amounts of things here in town that are just so amazing. And uh, I'm just so excited that I was chosen uh, to be one of the nominees this year. It's such a great honor. The different accomplishments of the other women. I'm just so honored to be a part of them. I feel like I'm just a little speck. I haven't really done all that much. But people tell me that I've blessed their lives and I'm grateful for that. Make Haverhill and our surrounding areas better than they are. Uh, 
it takes a lot of talent and women are really talented and this group of women are real go-getters. I'm extremely proud to be part of the Tribute to Women sponsored by the YWCA and I am certainly in great company. Nominations are open to everyone, so if you know a local woman who goes above and beyond in her community, nominate her for the 2017 Tribute to Women by visiting ywcahaverhill.org. Forget the decorated trees, turkey dinners, and colored eggs. For horror writers and their fans, it's all about the witches, jack-o'-lanterns, and fun-sized candy bars. Halloween is the holiday to end all holidays, and these writers and readers came out in force for the second Merrimack Valley Halloween Book Festival at the Haverhill Public Library last weekend. Come along and learn how these horrorists get inspired and how they celebrate their favorite day of the year. Today we're at the Haverhill Public Library for the Haunted Book Festival. This is our pal Sid and he's going to tell us a little bit about the event today. So Sid, uh, do you have a favorite author? <laughs> this is the second year of the Merrimack Valley Halloween Book Festival, which is organized by Christopher Golden, sponsored by River City Writers and Jabberwocky Bookshop, and it's pretty exciting. The Merrimack Valley Halloween Book Festival uh, this year has over 30, 35, 36 authors, artists, and filmmakers. And so we have this opportunity where all of these writers can come together and talk to the public and sell books and sign books. But also we have these panels where people can sort of learn more about horror as a literary genre rather than just as some gory thing on TV. I love horror year round, just Horror 365. Um, every day is Halloween. I don't like fiction that's set in the real world because I want to escape from this ridiculous place we live in. So horror always has like, it's just, it's very fun to me and fantastical. Hi, I'm Tom Snagoski and I'm the writer of all the stuff on this table. I do young adult, adult, I've done comic books, video games. My favorite genre, of course, if you look at my stuff, you'll see that horror is kind of like the thing that I gravitate to. Always like the scary stuff. All the scary stuff on TV that your mother said you shouldn't like because it'll make you twisted when you grow up. Obviously, she didn't know what she was talking about. Hi, I'm EJ Stevens. I write the Spirit Guide Young Adult Paranormal Series. Actually, when I was very, very young, like four or five, my parents would read all the collected works of Edgar Allan Poe. They also read all of the um, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's Hounds of the Baskervilles, one of my all-time favorites. And it's definitely influenced all of my writing, even the urban fantasy. I'm Tony Trumley. I'm a horror writer, and I live in Gosstown, New Hampshire. This is my first release. It's called The Seeds of Nightmare, and it's 13 um, short stories, all horror terror-based. I wrote my first story when I was around 12 years old. It was called Spiders Ate My Face. Uh, my dad got real mad at me and didn't like it, and so I kind of stopped and didn't take it up again until I was in my mid-50s. So for the last five or seven years is when I've been really writing strong. I have loved horror since I was a little kid, um, starting by watching The Twilight Zone and a show called Kolchak the Night Stalker, which uh, most people won't remember, but because uh, it was only on for one season, but it was a huge influence on me when I was a little kid. And then I found Stephen King, and it was all over at that point. And I've been writing horror, fantasy, science fiction, thriller, novels, and comic books for 24 years. Halloween is the high holiday for me. It's like my day. You know, I watch scary movies, read some scary stories. I just love the feeling of it. It also, to me, Halloween is all wrapped up with fall and the leaves and the crisp air and all of that. It's my favorite time of year. For me, Halloween is like goth Christmas. So, like, this is this is me all of the time. I love the, the festiveness. I love the fashion. I love all of the literature that, that gets a spotlight shine shown on it at this time of year. I do the goth thing year round, so I will definitely be doing either cosplay or just just being really kind of in the into the dark fashion. Halloween is just is my favorite time of the year. Everywhere you look, you see spooky things, and uh, you know there's nothing better for her writer than to look around and see spooky things in the stores and the streets. I've been in this business for 
more than 20 years, and so I know so many writers who write the kind of stuff I write or write the kind of stuff I like. But we also had people come as from as far away as Toronto, Canada, from Detroit and Michigan, who brought themselves here for this event. And it's been great, and I hope that it's going to grow every year. It's an event just for people who love spooky stories. <laughs> If you miss the Halloween Book Festival, have no fear. The River City Writers will be holding a Christmas book fair at the Haverhill Library on December 10th from 10 to 4 p.m., where you can meet the writers featured on the show today and many more. Pulling cars out of the Merrimack is one of the Clean River Project's biggest jobs. And yesterday afternoon, car number 70 was taken out near the Bradley Brook rest area along 110. Keeper! Throw it back! It's October 26th, and we're here in Bradley Brook. And this is car number 70. Well, this one here is getting towed to the tow yard where the insurance company will notify that we recovered their vehicle. Uh, the state police are on hand, they're going to run the VIN numbers anytime, and they'll tell us when this was stolen. It's a 1986 Nissan Sentra, and it was stolen in 1988. And you can see, there's no more harm being done to the environment. This one's going to a junkyard. Pretty amazing job Rocky and his team did here in Haverhill. Lots of exciting announcements this week, starting off with the annual East Parish Meeting House Potluck Dinner on Sunday, October 30th from 2 to 4 p.m. Restorations have been ongoing at the Meeting House over the past two years. Come see the new roof, restored historic plaster walls, and wainscoting in process. Thanks to support from the community and state organizations. Come over and ring the historic bell and enjoy good food and camaraderie. RSVP to Roberta Rofo at 617-750-1154 or by email at rrofo at comcast.net. In support of Cogswell Art Space, Steve Janovicus is hosting Artful Flowers by Steve, a demonstration of floral arranging to show his support for Cogswell. Light refreshments and beverages will be provided and arrangements will be raffled off at the end of the evening. Tickets must be purchased in advance. You can buy them online at bit.ly backslash Cogswell Flowers by Steve or email Jamie at jldsimone at gmail.com. Lastly, trick-or-treating is this Saturday, October 29th from 5 to 7 p.m. in Haverhill. So pick up a few bags of candy, leave the porch light on, and get ready for the sugar-fueled procession of little goblins, princesses, and ninja turtles to your doorstep. If you have a story or event you'd like to see featured on the Haverhill Journal, call us at 978-372-8070 or email info at haverhillcommunitytv.org. And don't forget to like us on Facebook or at our HC Media YouTube channel. And that's what's happening in Haverhill the week of October 27th. Happy Halloween, everyone. We'll see you next time.